Basketball. Why did you say basketball? Uh, that's what this video is about. This video is about basketball. Thank you for oh. asking, Samantha. You know, there's a story that I wanted to tell. A story about basketball. And then the credits. Our hair is wet, but it's gonna keep drying. <laughs> Let us know how dry our hair is by the end by the of the video. By the end of this video. Hello, everybody. My name is Samantha, and this is my boyfriend, Gray. If you don't know us already, I don't know why. You should have been watching my videos. So today, we wanted to share a story that we've talked about in another video, but we've wanted to give it in more detail and with a better timeline since it's just about the one year anniversary of when this all happened. We're kind of telling the story of my first chemo, but we're telling more. How, how should I say it? It's a personal story of <laughs> redemption and sacrifice yeah. and health it is and that. wellness matched against a national story of a little basketball team from Virginia defying the odds to win a national championship. There's an A you plot. You gave it away. There's an A plot and a B plot in this story, it would make a great movie, and I will sell the movie rights for an appropriate amount of money to anyone out there who wants to make a movie. <laughs> Basically, we're gonna be telling the story of how Gray gave up a really big opportunity to come with me to my first chemo. If you don't know by now, we both went to the University of Virginia. Samantha graduated in 2018. 18. And I graduated in 2019, so last year, was my fourth year and she had graduated, but we we're both big fans of Virginia basketball. The story really begins a year before that in 2018 when Samantha and I, both being members of the Cavalier Band, had gone to a number of basketball tournaments and participated as part of the band in a really cool opportunity. So it was the first round, the round of 64, of the 2018 NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament. Yeah. Number one seed Virginia against number 16 seed University of Maryland, Baltimore County. <laughs> Meanwhile, Samantha, I was at that game. Yes, and I was playing at the Women's Basketball Tournament for our UVA's Women's Basketball Team. And I was told that if I played at the Women's Tournament that weekend, then I would get to play at the Men's Tournament for the rest of their time in the tournament and everyone expected UVA to win that the, the entire tournament that year I think 25% of brackets had UVA winning and no number one seed had ever lost to a 16 seed before so they were sure that they were wow, going foreshadowing. To win. we're gonna win that one game no problem with that Samantha at the women's basketball tournament was in what city I was in Columbia South Carolina and we were in Charlotte Charlotte South Carolina. North, North Carolina. Carolina. North Carolina. Yeah. We were in Charlotte again. Are we always in Charlotte? Yeah. Everything's in Charlotte. Uh -huh. So you're sure it was Charlotte? Yeah. Okay, so they were in Columbia, South Carolina. We were in Charlotte, North Carolina. Their game had been completed either the previous day or earlier that day. The band director had said that the two bands, bands the band at the men's game and the women's game, could go meet up. Uh, the next day for after the next day. you guys moved on in the tournament. Right, for a little celebration while we waited for the next game to start. Because the women's team won, which was more was actually pretty surprising that we were the women's team was doing well. Yeah. So to make a long story short, the men's team ended up losing that game, being the first number one seed men's basketball team ever. Ever to lose to a number sixteen seed. And it was heartbreaking. It was. And so I went straight home after that game with the band and the trip was off, and so were our hopes of going to the national championship that year. Mm -hmm. So then skipping ahead just a little under a year, the men's basketball team is look, looks like it's doing pretty well again, but we're all pretty cautious, and a lot of people think UVA basketball is a joke at this point, <laughs> but we're still doing well. Yeah. And so we start by going to the ACC tournament in March. In March. In... It was... Was it in Charlotte I again? I don't know exactly. You were in so many different cities. I'll look it up. One thing that we forgot to mention is that not everyone who's in the Cavalier Marching Band gets picked to go on these basketball tournaments. So it's actually an honor to get picked to be in the band 
Um, usually they pick more brass players because they need to have a loud band, but other than that, um, they try to pick strong players or people who have been in the band for a lot of years. There's 300 people in the band and only like 30 people get picked to actually go to these tournaments, so it's a pretty big deal. The ACC tournament in 2019 was in Charlotte, North Carolina, because Yay. everything's always in Charlotte, North Carolina. Gray was heading to the ACC tournament pretty soon after I found out I was diagnosed with cancer. It was about a week after. Um, you actually skipped the early morning rehearsal to come with me to my IVF appointment. That's right. With the fertility doctor because we were trying to decide if I wanted to freeze my eggs or whatever before I started chemo. And so he came with me to that and then he went straight back to the band building and got on a bus to go to Charlotte with the band to play at the basketball tournament, the ACC tournament, which is, I guess, how do we explain that? That's, it's just our, it's just our conference. Right. Just the conference UVA is in and then the NCAA tournament is all of college basketball. So we, we didn't go that far in the ACC tournament. Right. So. And so we leave Charlotte thinking, you know, we might, this might not be our year either. I think I had started or was about to start my IVF treatments then. So I had to give myself shots. I had to go into the office for transvaginal ultrasounds like every other day or every day. And so you were back for a little bit of when I started that and then you left again to go to the round of 64 for the NCAA tournament. That's right. You left on the next Wednesday or Tuesday or something. Right. It was a little bit hard for me not to have him there while I was doing my IVF. Um, not like for the appointments or for the shots, just the fact that he was just not around for so long and I was going through like a lot of stuff that was very new to me and you know I just found out I had cancer so I was going through a lot he was gone a lot and but still I mean it was a great opportunity for him and I wanted him to go I told him many times he should go you asked every time if it was okay for you to go and I told you every time to go we won both games in Columbia and the next weekend we went to the Sweet 16 and then ultimately the Elite 8 in Louisville Kentucky which was even cooler. They put us in a fancier hotel with the team. It was a great experience, but that is not really the, the critical part of the story. The real point here is this was essentially my third consecutive week right. away from Samantha. She's going through IVF treatment and then later the start of her cancer treatment. Yeah. And we were predicting had we gone to the final four and, and we can put this in any order you want, that that would be another week that I wouldn't be there. And we were both at this point feeling the stress. I wanted to be there for her, and she, of course, wanted me to be there with her during her treatment, which is totally reasonable. But at the same time, this, these basketball tournaments, I had been to three already, and I was willing to skip the class necessary to go to these. So I'd skipped two weeks of class. Luckily, one, the first was in the ACC tournament was over spring break. And missed a lot of time with Samantha to go to these tournaments because the basketball team was actually Doing, doing really well. Doing really well. Yeah. And so it was a very cool experience. And it's the first time in a very long time that our basketball team did do that well. So it was really a once in a lifetime opportunity for him or as like a member of the band to be able to be going to all these tournaments. We won the Sweet 16, our Sweet right. 16 round against Oregon. Assuming that UVA made it to the Final Four, that they won the Elite Eight game, Gray would come back after the Elite Eight game. I would have my egg retrieval surgery on April 2nd. He would leave on April 4th with the band to the Final Four, and then I would have my first chemo on April 5th. The day before the Elite Eight game, I was really thinking to myself, I was like, man, I hope they lose. I really hope that UVA loses this game because then Gray will be home and he will be there with me for my first chemo. And then on the day of the Elite Eight, I said to myself, okay, I really gotta stop hoping they lose because that's completely unfair to Gray, that's completely unfair to the UVA basketball team that has worked so hard to like get to where they are. I do hope they win because that would be really awesome and it would be the first time in a long time. Um, so I'm just going to cheer as much as I can for the team. I'm just going to tell Gray that I want him to stay 
and be there for my last chemo. So we win this big nail-biting game, just like all of our games are, against Purdue on the weekend of the 30th, 31st. And that makes us the South Region champions. So it's not just like a normal game in the progression of the tournament. They drop the confetti, the coach comes out and talks, they give them all hats, they cut down the net, all of that stuff. And the band gets to sit there right by the court and watch all of that happen. After the game, we get to go out on the court, take pictures, collect confetti, whatever it is that we want to do, then haul our instruments back on the bus, go back to the hotel and celebrate, which is exactly what we did. So we win this game that until the last moment we thought that we were going to lose. <laughs> yeah, I was watching it on TV too and it was mm -hmm. it was very much a nail biter and I was planning up until that point, up until the last second to tell Gray that I wanted him to stay for my chemo, but then when I saw all of it happen, so such a crazy game, I was like I cannot take this away from him. This is a huge opportunity. This is super exciting. I cannot tell him he can't go to the final four. So then, of course, the, then only, I get a phone call. the only thing I'm thinking about this whole time is Savannah because it's been three weeks for me too, and I'm completely torn between her chemo treatment and thinking maybe I can hold out just one week longer and then be with her the whole time because the one more week is going to be the final four. And so I call her from the court, <laughs> standing in the middle of the court, confetti's falling, all that stuff, and. I just tell her, I've got to go. And you said, I know. I know. And then I'm thinking, you know, we, we'll, we'll need to have a longer talk about it, but, uh, you know, I think this will be okay. I think this can work. It's not ideal, but I think I can have both. Yeah. And I talked to the band director. I'm like, I really want to go. Uh, because he had actually two years prior to that said that I would probably get to go if we went to the final four. We didn't get to go to the final four. So I had always thought that my chances were two really years. good. Two, oh, two years for previously. the tournament two years For before. the tournament two years in 2017. Oh. So I'd always thought my chances were pretty good. And the only thing stopping me from going to the final four was how good the basketball team did. And we were finally going to make it. And so I didn't, I didn't want to miss that opportunity. I wanted to be there, win or lose, at that game. We went back to the hotel, walked through the tunnel, and everybody was giving us high fives and cheering us, and then we formed a little part of the tunnel, and the <laughs> team walked through, and I got autographs this whole time. I've been collecting autographs from the team on yeah, a hat. hat. Yeah, And then we got pizza late at night and just hung out in the ballroom of the hotel, celebrating that we were going to get to go to the Final Four. Cuey. Don't ruin this video, Q. Greg got home. We were hanging out. I was like, this is going to be fine. He's going to be able to go to the final four. This is going to be okay. I'm going to be fine for my chemo treatment. He's going to come to my egg retrieval surgery. It'll be okay. And I just started thinking, you know, it's not actually fine. Basically what I told him was, I want you to stay. Um, it, it is your decision whether you stay or not. I'm not telling you you have to stay. You also said that and you weren't trying to make a threat. What you said was, if I didn't stay mm -hmm. and I was gone, then you weren't sure if you were going to want me to be part of it for the, for the rest of the treatment. Yeah, I said something. I said something like that. When I found out I was diagnosed, it was hard because I was worried about our relationship. That was something that was worrying me because... I mean, I thought it was unfair for you to have to be dating me because I had cancer. You can talk about how hard it is for the other person um, trying to decide if they should stay in the relationship or if they shouldn't. And it is. It's, it's very, very difficult. But I think what people don't think about a lot is that it's also hard for the person going through it. Um, because you do need to have both of those sides. like. He could have stayed in the relationship, but I could have been distant and not wanting to talk to him and not wanting to share parts of my life. So like trying to think through this and trying to think of how it would affect this kind of a relationship. When you're hit with a cancer diagnosis, it's, it's, it's hard and it's very unexpected. And you kind of just feel like you want everything else in your life that you can control to be controlled. So being in a relationship is kind of difficult because you don't want to let someone in 
to see you at a really difficult time in your life um, if they might not be there forever. I was thinking if he's not going to be here for this, if he's missing thing after thing after thing, I don't know if I'm going to let be able to let him back in. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of closing off this wall of, okay, it's okay if he misses all of this. And I'm not trying to say like he was being a bad boyfriend or anything. Like we were talking about this every step of the way. Um, but it was just, it was just kind of like I was putting up this guard of like, it's fine that you're not here. But really, if I was going to be completely open with him and to be able to move on with the relationship and to be able to let him in and see everything, I was going to need to have him there. And that's where I was coming from when I was saying, I don't know how this is going to affect things if you're not there. Yeah. Does that make sense? It, it I, does. The, the one thing I want to make really clear is that you didn't want me to miss the final four either. Right. I didn't. And she didn't want me to have to make that sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And she really n never does. She didn't then, and she doesn't ask me for something unless it's what she thinks she needs. It, it wasn't that she was trying to test me or that right. she was trying to make me stay here because she didn't want me to have something fun or something cool like that. She only asked after a lot of thought right. because it's what she thought she needed. And the other thing that we were worried about was, both of us were worried about was, I didn't want you to resent me for like making you stay and then you missed out on this whole opportunity and then like, what if we broke up later? Like, then you would have had to miss this and like, and, our relationship and, didn't matter. And so like, I really wanted him to make the decision because I didn't want there to be any resent there. A resentment. Resentment. Resent is a verb. You're right. Oh, and the final four was tough. You there was so were, much yeah. lead up to it. Parades and performances by the band at all sorts of events leading up to it that the band had to leave super early, like three or four days before the games. And so I would have been gone for a very long time. On the other side, I'm weighing this once in a lifetime opportunity to go to a game that UVA hasn't been to in like 30 years or something like that, possibly two games, possibly a national championship, which we haven't been to, hadn't been to ever at this point, and then maybe even a win, though we didn't think that was terribly likely. We thought it was just really cool to be in the Final Four. It was in Minneapolis, where my uncle lives, so I might be able to spend some time with family. They put us up in a really nice hotel in Louisville for the Elite Eight. They were going to put us in something amazing for <laughs> Minneapolis, I'm sure. There would have been all sorts of freebies, hats, shirts, playing at different events. We would have had our faces on TV probably quite a bit. Uh, and to top it all off, courtside seats at the three most important games in college basketball. And there's no telling when UVA would get to go to them again. And as a band member, I'd never get to go to them again because I was a fourth year. So that was what I was weighing, was all these goodies and prestige and just fun with my friends for that matter. And I just wanted to, and I actually did for a little bit, pound my head against the wall because I did not want to have to make this decision. I wanted you to just be okay with it. Right. And that's what you wanted too. I did too, I, I really did. I wasn't even gonna bring it up. Like for real, I was trying my hardest not to bring it up, but, but I knew that I had to. And, and I knew that you wouldn't have brought it up unless that's yeah. the way you felt. And it was a close decision, but I ultimately made the decision to not go to the final four to not join the band. So I texted the band director and told him that I wouldn't be going and explained why. And, and he, he knew about Samantha's cancer at this point, so he right. said it was totally reasonable. And I'm glad someone else got to go in my place. I'm sure they had a great time. Yeah. I'm sure they enjoyed it. But that is not the end of the story. Because then I decided um, that I want it all. I want both things. <laughs> truth is I do resent her for it. I hate her for it. In fact, I loathe her. Uh, I can't stand to look at her because her beauty just reminds me of great times we used to have before she became manipulative. And um, honestly, I don't know why I stayed with her other than just guilt. She's constantly emotionally abusive. She's made me give up everything I've ever loved. 
Um, 